Greetings, great talk learners. Today we are going to be doing life sciences. I am Miss Zimasa Sanda, the subject planner for the sciences subjects in the Eastern Cape, meaning I'm responsible for life sciences, agric sciences, and physical sciences. So today I will be taking you through to paper two revising and preparing you for the final examinations. So the first thing we are going to do is to look at the topic and the mark distribution in paper two. Um, if you look at paper two, we have got four topics only. Um, the first one being the DNA code of life, um, which is weighing 18% of the paper and that translates to 27 marks in the paper. Then we have meiosis, which is 14% of the paper, which translates to 21 marks. Then we have genetics and inheritance, which is 32% of the paper. So you can see that genetics is taking quite a bit of that paper too, and it translates to 48 marks. And evolution is 36% translating to 54 marks. So already you know which topics they are carrying a lot of marks in paper two. And then the total of that paper is 150, 150 marks and you will be writing for two hours. Now what tips you need to ensure when you are wanting to pass paper two? It's very important learners that you know your terminology terminology related to each topic, you must practice section A questions from past papers. You can use the trial papers from the other provinces where you look at all the question ones from those provinces. You will see that the questions are repeating, but you will learn to um, remember those questions and the terminologies. You need to know all your processes um, we will talk about the different processes as we move along. Be able to label and state the function of the labeled parts when you are given diagrams. It's important that you underline keywords in a question. In life sciences, we often have text-rich questions where you have to read, especially when it comes to the questions involving scientific investigation. So it is important that you underline in a question so that you can get the essence of that question. Be clear on what is required by a question. Don't just look at the term or something that you know and then you start writing. You must make sure that you understand what is it that is required by that question. You need to bring the necessary equipment to draw diagrams, to draw graphs, including the pie graphs where you would need a, protect, a protractor and a compass. You need to have your ruler to draw your graphs. And also you need to have a calculator to perform simple calculations. What are some of the focus areas in the different topics of paper two? Now under DNA code of life, which we said that it is out of 27 marks, you need to know the difference between transcription and DNA replication. So those are two processes that you need to know under the, the, the DNA code of life. Now, when you go to your examination guidelines, you have got a beautiful um, description of transcription but you don't have one for DNA replication. But when you look at these processes, they are so similar to each other because they both start with the DNA double helix molecule unwinding and unzipping and the weak hydrogen bonds breaking between these uh, um, the, the, the nucleotides. And then you have, they separate into two strands now, the difference that you are going to get now between DNA replication and transcription is that in DNA replication, you are going to have both of those separate strands 
acting as templates and then in transcription it's only one of those strands that is used as a template it's also important for you to be able to interpret a dna profile um, I want the learners to understand that there is a difference between a DNA profile and DNA profiling. A DNA profiling is that uh, a picture that you see with the uh, dark bands, which is as a result of the DNA profiling, which is a process. So then we need to know what is the difference between those two, a profile and the DNA profiling, which is the process. Counting the number of nucleotides in a molecule, you can be asked to count how many nucleotides are there uh, or how many nitrogenous bases are there, um, as well as calculating the, 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 the calculations that are based on nucleotide base composition. Very important, you will always find this question in most of the, uh, of the question papers, the effects of a mutation. Then the second topic in meiosis, definitely by now you should be knowing your phases of meiosis, what is happening in each phase. You also need to know what is the significance of DNA replication for mitosis because mitosis is another type of, of, of division that you did in grade 10, but it's important that you know it for grade 12. The events in each phase, um, that is, you must be able to give the difference between, you must tell the difference between the given cell and the human cell in terms of the chromosome number. So you'll be given a particular cell, for example, it will have, say, four chromosomes, and then you must know whether that cell, is it a cell of a, a human or is it just a cell of any other organism? The mistake that most learners usually do is to just assume that any cell that is given there, when they are asked for chromosome number, they assume that it is a human cell and they will write 46 chromosomes, whereas it is not a human cell. Then you need to know the, the abnormal meiosis, which is what happens when non-disjunction or the chromosomes fail to separate during anaphase one or during, or the chromatids fail to separate during anaphase two. Then in genetics, which is out of 48 marks, uh, quite a big chunk of the paper, there the most important thing there is that all of you should be able to do the template of the genetic cross, starting with the P1 and the phenotype, and then you have your, your genotype, and then you have your um, meiosis and then the gametes and the fertilization. Then you get your F1 genotype and then you get your F1 phenotype. You have got two marks that you are guaranteed of in a genetic cross. For you to be able to list all those things that I've mentioned in the correct order, you will be given a mark for writing meiosis and fertilization in the correct sequence and then you will also get a mark for writing p1 at the top and f1 at the bottom don't write them as p1 plus f1 as you usually see in the in the in the in the in the marking guidelines that is used for the marking you must actually show the whole template to show us where is P1, where is, um, where is F1. So it's important that you know that. Um, the types of dominance, you need to know the different types. We have three, there's co-dominant, co I mean complete dominance. Then you have incomplete dominance and co-dominance, which are beautifully explained or described in the examination gui guidelines. Working with ratios in a genetic cross, Sex determination, how is sex determined? Inheritance of blood groups, as well as interpretation of pedigree diagrams, and then your cloning and genetic engineering. And you must know the differences between these two uh, processes, that is cloning and genetic engineering. Then when we go to evolution, evolution is 
uh, 54 marks, uh, which is the topic that has got the most marks in paper two. There you need to know the evidence of evolution. Already you should know that we talk about fossil evidence. Um, we talk about genetic evidence. We talk about uh, modification by descent. Modification by descent. Those are all uh, different types of uh, evidence of evolution. And then we talk about evidence from biogeography. This is when we are talking about general um, evolution. But when we talk about human evolution, we bring now, um, we have fossil evidence, we have uh, genetic evidence, but, and then in addition to that, for human evolution, you get, um, you get um, your cultural evidence. So those are the different types of evidences that we, that we get. So it's important that you know the different types of um, evidence for evolution, the causes of variation and the two types of variation. We talk about continuous variation and discontinuous variation. Then we also know what is artificial sele uh, selection, whereby the, the human is the selection pressure when artificial selection is done. Um, the applications of Lamarck and Darwin, as well as punctuated equilibrium. When we talk about Lamarck, we immediately think of the, um, we, we immediately think of, um, okay, we immediately think of, sorry, um, we immediately think of, immediately think of use and disuse. And then we also think of inheritance, inheritance of acquired characteristics. Okay, so that is what is the basis of Lamarck's theory of evolution. And then when we talk of a Darwin, we immediately think of natural selection. Okay, so those are the theories of evolution. And we know that Lamarck's theory was actually uh, discarded. Significance of evolu evolutionary trends between human ancestors and the present homo sapiens. We need to know the similarities between the humans and the African apes, as well as the differences, as well as the evolutionary trends um, um, from having a smaller brain uh, size to a, a larger brain size. Um, all of these are in your uh, mind, the gap. Out of Africa hypothesis, that is the things that you need to focus on in terms of paper two. Now let us look also that in paper two, just like in paper one, you will get a question on, um, you will get a question on, you will get a question on scientific investigation. Like we, we, we know in each of our papers, you will get something like 13 to 15 marks. You need to know your variables. That is your dependent, independent variable. You need to know your controlled variables or your fixed variables, which remain constant during your investigation. You need to describe the relationship between the variables, as well as describing results and stating the conclusion of, a, of, of, the, of the investigation. You must be able to do graphs. I don't know now who doesn't know how to do graphs because we've been doing graphs for so long. Um, so you need to know the different aspects of each type of graph. In a bar graph, your bars must be of equal size and they must be having equal space between the bars. You need to know that. That's why we say it's important for you to bring a ruler to the exam so that you don't draw your bars freehand Otherwise, they will not be uh, equal size. Then percentage increase and 
percentage decrease calculations, you need to be able to do those. There will be some examples that I'm doing with you um, that are showing um, these different types of calculations. Now, the format of the paper, we have got two questions, just like you did um, in your trial or preparatory examinations. You have two sections in the paper. There is section A out of 50 marks, and in section A, you are going to get your short answer questions, um, as well as questions such as your multiple choice questions, your terminology, your matching um, statements and items as uh, questions, as well as data response questions, where it, you may be given a diagram asking you short questions, short answer questions in that particular diagram. So you are not expected to be answering long questions in section A or giving long answers. Then in section B, you have got two questions, which is your question two and question three. So basically your life sciences paper has got three questions. Question one is in section A, question two and question three, they are in section B and they are both um, allocated 50 marks each and they may be divided into two to four subsections. Um, so you will see it depends on how the examiners have set their paper. Um, I'm not going to read through all those exemptives, but it's very important, my learners, to be able to note the action verbs. When it says explain, it means that you must give cause and effect, or there is a statement and a reason. Uh, describing, you are just describing something, describing the process of transcription without having to explain anything. Um, as I've just said, now you will be able to be asked things like describing transcription and translation. Again, let us not confuse terminology co-dominance with incomplete dominance. Remember, in co-dominance, both alleles are expressed in the phenotype of the organism. So if we are talking about a, a flower that is red crossed with a flower that is white, then your offspring are going to have both alleles for that those two colors. That means that it will appear red and white. So it's both expressed. Whereas in um, incomplete dominance, you get an intermediate of these two phenotypes. So you get an intermediate phenotype. So if you are crossing the red with the white, you are going to have a pink flower, which is the intermediate phenotype um, between the red and the white. And then you have your homologous and homozygous. Uh, you mustn't confuse those. We talk about homologous chromosomes, and then we talk about homozygous. Um, then we have natural selection, and you must know the three laws that are uh, proposed by Mendel, which is your law of dominance, your um, uh, pr principle of segregation, as well as the principle of independent assortment. Time management is very important. You must check your time so that you can attempt all the questions. Um, I will stop at this point uh, for the exam tips. Our lesson will carry on whereby we are looking at some examples of questions that you can get in section A uh, based on DNA code of life and we will ca carry on with other examples also appearing on question two. Um, thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to write your comments or your questions in the comment section. Goodbye.